Where the fuck is McClay? Brian can answer our question. What's up? Where the fuck is McClay? <laughs> no. That's hilarious. Dude, that he's was awesome. Totally just asked that and you popped dude, on. Dude, it was that perfect, was dude. Proof. He nailed it, man. Wow. Wow, that was bad. And COVID fucking nailed it, dude. Good job, buddy. You know, say the same thing that he did. Boom. That's it. Just to set it down. All right, ready to go. Action. Awesome. This is the podcast. I'm <laughs> Keith Obit with my best friend Brian McClay. We are brought to you by Bang Salon. Come get all your hair needs, including cuts, natural colors, vivid colors, extensions, shampoo and stylings, all under one roof at Bang Salon. Find and message Bang Salon on Instagram at Bang Salon at B N G D S A L O N. Use promo code podcast for twenty percent off your first visit. So come on down and get banged by Jordan. But if you really try to bang her, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> cool. All right, check us out on Spotify, on Google Play, uh, all those f- your favorite podcatchers. Um, make sure you guys go check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash patreon.com slash the podcast. Um, and uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Tell us what you think of the show. Hell yeah. Thanks, Brian. We are very excited to have two guests in the house today. Uh, we have Brian Rambo and Lee Kate. Um, how you guys doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing great. Is his, le- his level good? Yeah. Yeah. He just needs to bring his mic a little bit closer. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We really appreciate you uh, coming down. We had uh, Christina on and after the show, uh, she was like, you got to get fucking Brian Rambo on the show, man. He was on American Ninja War. And I'll be honest, um, at the time, um, I wasn't that familiar with American Ninja Warrior. I knew about the show and I knew about the obstacle course. So maybe can you just tell people what American Ninja Warrior is that don't know about it? Well, I'm supposed to talk. To you. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't have a cool name like Brian. Randall, right? <laughs> yeah, no shit. That's why Yeah, so basically what we do is uh, we get to play on an adult playground. So it's just a bunch of obstacles hanging in the air. The goal of the show is to get from one starting block to the top of a 14 and a half foot worth wall and hit a buzzard and not fall in the water on the way you do it. And how many people are competing against like at a time? So on the show, it's they, it, it, you have to submit a video and they actually have to pick you because it's a TV show first and a competition second. But normally it's about 120 some people per region. And usually there's six regions. So and the, first then, th- the first night you're up against tw- 100 and some people. So. Damn. So how did how did you guys even get involved and get onto the show? That's kind of a long story for me, but Rambo's kind of whipped, so his wife's side. <laughs> <laughs> is your guys' volume okay, or is it too loud? No, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Is his volume good? It sounds weird. It's it sounds low, but uh, I mean it's going up, but it's it's really low. Okay. So. Okay. Do you, I don't know if you want to if you want to check it or you're good no, with that. Okay. Good. All right. No, it sounds a little echoey. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why the fuck it sounds. Like yeah, it. let's see what's going on. Let me just sit here. Um, I think it's it's okay. I mean, I'm okay on mine. I'm I'm peaking so a little he's high. He's three, right? Yeah, he's three. Brian's three. Check, check, check. Mic check. Um, hold on a second. Sorry, guys. Right now. Check, check. There oh, you there go. There you go. I can hear myself now. Yeah, yeah. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> check 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 yep there we go all right lee go ahead and talk check check you guys good yep check there check we go she's done all this before hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> just, just hit it with a hammer <laughs> anyway yeah like i said i really appreciate you guys coming down and stuff but uh as far as the show american ninja wear we just were going on a deep dive just watching like, you guys fucking training and stuff and it opened a whole new world of just like you said this, this playground that you can play on and um i know you guys are training in people's like look like people's backyards not only like your own gym that you own but um i don't know it just sounds like really fun like how did you guys get involved how did you first hear about any of this well it's been on for this will be the 12th season yeah so i just i remember watching it you know five six eight years ago thinking that looks easy i could do that and just so you know rambo (laughs) is what 39 41 this year 
Yeah. yeah. So I'm 38. So we're not exactly young bucks. But. <laughs> well, at that time, um, when you were having that saying you could already do it, what kind of um, training and health fitness were you doing at that time to be that confident? At, at that time, I never tried any of it, but I just watched it. And like most people who watch it, they're like, oh, that looks easy. I want to try that stuff. And yeah. But so. most people say that and most people don't go on there and actually fucking destroy right, the right, fucking right. course. Yeah. So, like absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. back, back then, I probably wouldn't have ever tried it at all. So I ended up, uh, I fell into the sport because I ended up quit, quit drinking. I stopped drinking. It'll be seven years ago in October. Congrats. Congratulations. So when that happened, you lose all your friends because they're all drinking buddies, right? Mm -hmm. So I had to find something else to do. And a friend of a friend makes climbing holds. That's what he does for a living. And he's got a warehouse that he set up for swinging around Ninja Warrior stuff. He knew all the guys from the show. So I started going down there and hanging out. Kind of had a knack for it. A few months later, my wife signed me up for a competition at a place called AZR up north. Um, Adam Rail was there, pretty big name. Um, I did fairly decent, beat most of the people that train there. So I was like, hey, I'm going to start hanging out here. Maybe make some new friends and boom, this guy. When you did that competition, were you able to practice any way for that? Because it was so new. Does that make sense? Yeah, they don't. For most competitions, you don't get to practice any of it before you run it. So if you're lucky, you might be able to get on things that are at other gyms and then you'll have some experience on it. But for the most part, it's people try to throw in new stuff every time. Okay, so the course changes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you guys, you guys were both af athletes before this, right? I mean, you grew up playing sports, so it was kind of like something that was you're e easier to jump into. I mean, I grew up playing soccer my whole life, so I was always athletic. I'm small, too, and light, so things were easy for me. Yeah, I grew up, uh, I was like the jock, but I was the nerdy jock. Like, I didn't have any cool friends, but I played a lot of sports. So, And then also, I rode BMX bikes, so that's where I get my like thrill side of stuff. And then that's another thing about Ninja Warrior is... Like Rambo will tell you, drinking, you know, you get that high, that, that fun, and it's all cool, that emotion. Um, with Ninja, it's the same thing, flying through the air, trying new obstacles, getting something completed that you took you a month to learn, things like that. You get that same emotional uh, roller coaster high as you do as partying or. Yeah. You're, you're, we're both ex drug addicts, so we know exactly what you're talking about as far as we're getting like different kinds of thrills. We're like extremists. Yeah. Like totally. everything, when I used to drink, it wasn't, hey, let's go out and have a couple beers and call it a night. It was, Let's drink until fall down Blackout, drunk. Like yeah, yeah, like yeah. The party yeah. never ended. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At some point, you just yeah. have to make that change. Yeah. You know, or else, so. only a few bad things are gonna happen. And you're either gonna fucking kill yourself, kill someone else, or get a DUI. And, and, I, and, and literally, literally that's happened to anyone, everyone I've known. You yeah. know. So. Um, oh, I got one back in 2004. I got to hang out in Tent City for. What what it cost? It, like 10, 10, 15 grand clip? Ten grand. Yeah, I just spent ten grand on. I just got over one a year and a half ago. I just got the thing out of my car. And yeah, shit. it is. Yeah. It is probably the dumbest thing to do, especially in Arizona. Especially in Arizona, because like you said, either you're gonna kill somebody, you're gonna get killed, and you're no matter what, you're getting hit with ten to fifteen grand. Yeah, and that's a lot of fucking cash. Yeah. We That's the Uber for the rest of your life, yeah. back and forth to the bar. Well, yeah. there's no reason to drink and drive <laughs> now none. with Ubers, in my opinion. Absolutely and, you know, like We just lost a mutual friend to drinking and driving just yeah. literally within the last couple of months. And I'm just like, now at the end of our podcast, I want to send a message. Like, don't fucking drink and drive, yeah, you know? Like, stupid. you don't have to nowadays, you know? <laughs> so. I'm, and I'm sure on top of all the Uber shit, there's somebody that you can always call, right? Yeah. And that's the thing. I'm, I got a younger brother who fucking every once in a while I catch him drinking and driving. I'm like, bro, just fucking call me. Like, yeah. I don't care when the fucking time is. So I just feel so fortunate because in my early 20s, I would just drink and I would drive and fucking. That's because we were, I survived. We were invincible at that. That's age, a bro. great fucking point. <laughs> that's a great point. Yeah. You, you, you literally feel like nothing's ever going to happen to you that it, it'll never, nothing will ever happen to you. And I luckily it, it never did as far as killing somebody, but I fell asleep at the fucking wheel. Like I could have killed myself, you know, like, yeah. but look, I, the DUI changed me is what really fucking got, helped me get my shit together. And uh -huh. it humbled me like using the public transportation, and <laughs> asking friends about my ride and shit. That sucks. Yeah. Having to deal sure. with that fucking stupid, uh, uh mechanism. Interlock. Did you interlock? have an interlock? I did. Yeah. You probably didn't have a camera though, huh? 
No, no. So I have. So every time I you have to blow in it, they fucking take a picture of you. So yeah. I'd always be like. <laughs> and I asked the guy, I was like, can I get the fucking all the pictures? Because I wanted like a time lapse of me just flipping it off in different yeah. outfits, you know? For a year. For like a whole year. But he's like, they're not going to give that to you, dude. <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah. But you were saying, like, you know, you guys obviously seem athletic as fuck, dude. When you did that course, I, I was just watching it like this. Like, I couldn't even probably make that first jump on that rope past the water. <laughs> I was like, you know what I mean? I was yeah, getting tired just watching it, so I don't even <laughs> fucking think about that shit, obviously. so Yeah, it's kind of weird because we get a lot of people come to our gym. Bodybuilders, CrossFitters, um, retired gymnastics, um, men and women, um, just an everyday person off the street. And it's really weird because it is genetic. And yeah, I, and fucking I'm A. I'm telling you because you get these people that are coming there and they'll look yoked. And you guys don't know what we look like, but I'm 215 and I'm six foot and Rambo is like 160 on a good day. So most of the time, the lighter, the better. But for some reason, I can still keep my fat ass in the air for at least six minutes. So it's not necessarily because I work out all the time. It's just that's just how I'm built. So. Yeah, we were actually talking about it because we were watching earlier and um, I was like, I don't know how these guys don't fuck up their backs and shit the way you guys are wrenching yourselves and shit. And Keith goes, it's because that's like how we're meant to actually be. We're meant to have a lot of that upper body strength. Flexibility. Like, hey, yeah, the like flexibility. Fucking, you know, swinging in trees and shit and all that. Like, and right. that's exactly what it is. Like some of the shit I'm, I was watching one um, where one of your one of your friends was was doing the thing where he's in between the two walls. And dude, his knee looked like it was like his back leg looked like it was like this. i was like oh my god dude what the fuck <laughs> shit was crazy man yeah but, but remember that's tv because after the run we're over here holding our shoulders limping yeah, yeah, around with yeah. our elbows like we're constantly in pain so i dude i i i my hands hurt just watching you guys man your fucking hands are always got to be just in, in immense pain do you guys do yes other and no oh, sorry. yes and no but go ahead what I was, do you guys do other training besides like this the ninja style training I'm a gym rat. I love to work out. Okay. I go to the gym or work out at our facility, you know, at least five days a week. But again, I'm almost I'm also 40, so I don't heal like the other kids do. You're, we're up now against 16, 17 year olds that are just amazing athletes and so strong that like I have to be on top of my game. It's like you almost have to time. work out extra just to yeah, keep up. Yeah, absolutely. I sit there and eat my Philly Birdos while I watch him work out. <laughs> you just go there to have fun. That's yeah. not true. I, I, he still rides his bike and stuff. He's up. He's at the BMX parks doing flips and the you know the foam pits and everything else. So, so you, but you actually have a workout facility within your gym. It's just a bunch of free weights that I had brought in yeah. from home. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Honestly, the the biggest workout for us is catching little kids that are falling. Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say that, like because. Uh, the kids in there must be just flocking. Like, do you guys have kids, allow kids? Uh, what's the age limit that kids yeah. can be doing? Yeah, 90% of our clients are kids. Um, obviously, we have adults, but usually it's between 5 and 14. Once the kids turn 15, 16, you know, they get their license, they fall off. But for the most part, it's uh, it's younger kids. And these kids are, are not scared of things. And exactly. We are there as they know that they can go big because me and Rambo are going to catch them if they fall. Right. Problem is, again... Some of those kids are pretty big. So <laughs> catching them is like is half the battle. That's how we get hurt most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> an eighty an eighty pound kid coming off of oh something twelve feet high. Yeah. That's why my my arm's been jacked for probably the last six months and it's from catching that's just a workout in itself. Kids. Yeah. Oh, it's we're picking yeah. them up because a lot yeah. of stuff's in the air. So they can't reach it. You gotta lift them up in the air over and yeah. over again. So I mean, not complaining. It is a lot of fun. You were talking yeah. about like different athletes coming there. What are the best when, when, what athletes are, do, do well in there? Like, is there a certain type of athlete that does well when they first pick it up? Extreme athletes, skateboarders. Cause they got the core. I mean, a lot of Ninja is hands and arms, but a lot of it's balance and core. So the skateboarders are just used to doing big wrecks, getting up, holding themselves up, keeping a tight bunch all the time. And then, um, yeah. Knees, knees to the chest is what, skaters do all day and when yeah. you're on the ninja course when you're hanging that's you're doing the same thing you're bringing your knees up it's actually like i would say probably 60 percent core over anything else that's when what you're i was doing telling we were watching it. i was like yeah that's all core right yeah there. Like, the feel... body control so i mean like like you said we get a lot of people who you know go to the gym they do crossfit they do things like that and they can do well um there's just surprisingly there's a lot of technique 
involved when moving through obstacles um, and the efficiencies. So once someone comes in and you can break some bad habits, especially if they're like a CrossFitter, we got to break a lot of bad habits of kipping and the way they swing and things like that. And within a few weeks, they're progressing, you know, really well. What about um, one of the things that you just talked about is how there's a lot of technique in it. And one of the things I notice is that guys coming up with different ways of doing things to get leverage, different types of leverage, um, almost like jujitsu type moves. It was crazy. There was one dude who was, who was uh, on like um, these balls that had hooks in them and he was putting his leg around his arm to get, you know. We were actually just working on that with our, our competitive team. It's that shit's a, so cool. It's called a figure four. And so when you're tired, you were probably watching yeah. Joe Morofsky. Um, Dude that yells a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. And when you do that, it, it relieves your core, your arm, and everything because your body's oh. locked around your arm. So everything's just on that hand. So when you're exhausted, you know, especially moving through a course that long, it's full body the whole time. So at some point you have to try to rest, figure things out. So, yeah. And figure all, four all, for sure. There was almost like a rhythm to it. Once he caught that rhythm of that figure four, he could go really fast. It was almost like a, a rhythm or a dance move type thing. It was yep. really dope. Yeah. 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 So are you like just trying to figure this out for that one part of the, in, just in case it shows up in competition somewhere? Is that how it works? Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that may, that's exactly what it is. In Ninja, there's basically four moves. There's a lache, which is pretty much jumping from one thing to the next in the air without using your feet. Then there's swinging, which doesn't sound hard, but it's there's a lot of different techniques to that. Trampolines, which is huge. Nowadays, these kids grow up on the trampolines. They got all the trampoline parks. Yep. Yep. Back in our day, you know, we had that one that we all knocked our tooth out on. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, trampolines, and then just once you master those, something might look different, but it's the same movement. So yeah. that's the key. And then the confidence. Confidence is huge in our sport. And, yeah. Yeah, young kids have that natural confidence too. Do you see a lot of them growing up in the sport now? I mean, how long have you has your gym been been around now? Well, let's say in the name of it first, Hit Squad Ninja Gym yep. and Ninja CrossFit, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, We're located in Tempe. We opened in October of 2019. Yeah, we, we haven't been open for very long. And then they shut us down right in March. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. That was, fucking sucks. That was brutal. Um, so... But, uh, yeah, you know what? That's a great. We didn't. I didn't even think about that, and that's yeah. so crazy because that that is uh, you guys are are a big issue in what's going on right now with COVID. Yeah, and we have a friend with a jujitsu gym dealing with you know right same kind right of issues and stuff. So did he shut down? Is he closed? Yeah, he shut down, then opened for a little bit, and then had to shut down again. Right, and, right. But then like you kind of get ridiculed in the community, like if you stay open of other people who are you know mask nazis and stuff and he was like, kind of like you guys well he didn't just open but he had just expanded and spent all this money yeah. to expand and get a bunch of new uh, p new clients you know put new new bodies in there and the covid shit hit yeah so how do you how do you explain it you always say that there was a different agenda to start like you know what i'm talking about are you talking about my conspiracy theories? No, Let's no, hear no. it. We yeah. love those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we Bust love out. that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were like the start was close everything down so we can prepare, get the ventilators, whatever. Then the message had changed. And oh, the, the way they keep changing the narrative. Yeah, it was. Oh, it was, of course. It was shut it down because we didn't have enough equipment. Well, we have enough equipment. We're still shut down. And then it was, you know, wear wear a mask or stay six feet apart. Now it's wear a mask in your house. Like, it's just the, just this this control that just keeps going. Yeah, so, yeah, it's definitely. I think there's uh, something way, way bigger on the back end of this. I, I think it's become <laughs> political. I think it's 100 percent become political, and I we, think we when, feel that same way. That yeah. There's something going on. Uh, in the when background. anything becomes political, and now it has to do with money and people making money off of it, and you look at you know the money that's being made by some of the hospitals and some of the medical systems. Um, the definitely the Democratic, and I'm not Republican or Democrat. Uh, you know, I'm 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 lean, you know, middle. But the Democratic Party is definitely gaining off of it, and um, there's a lot of fear in it. That's the scary thing. Yeah. The scary thing is is you you just at some point well, the, scary, you, the worst part you don't is just know. there's no there's gonna the social interaction with people like I you don't know how to like I didn't know how to approach you guys because yeah, I don't yeah. know if like. You know, you're, you know, there's people who are w complete one end who don't want to leave the house. And then there's the people on the other end who don't give a fuck. I'm in the middle or, you know what I mean? I'm kind of playing it safe. I, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. if I get yeah. it. I don't give a fuck. Like, I think just... we already actually had it back in like January, 
we had gone to the Fit Expo in California, and then we had, everyone in the gym got sick for like a month. Oh, and how man. bad was it? it bad was, flu? It was a cold. Yeah. I mean, I well, had we, a fever here yeah, and there. Yeah, but they were but, literally leaving for two weeks, and they come back, and then another kid would be gone for two weeks, come back. So yeah. it was, and then my daughter never got it, and we yeah. eat, lick, drink, everything, <laughs> sleep right next to each other. So I'm like, I was really hoping she wasn't going to get that sick. I thought it was the flu. And then she just never did. And I was like, oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> and then we find out that kids under the age of like 10 haven't been getting it. No. It's because at school and everything else, they've been exposed to a coronavirus for years. Yep. So. Yeah, it's kind of like. Um, the at, corona at, isn't new. At this point, no. I, I almost feel like the only people that we're seeing that's getting that's dying because of it are, are um older uh people, people weak immune systems. and weak immune systems yeah. and if you're if you're not one of those people you should be able to get your life back and going if 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 that's what you want to do um how have you guys been able to remain open or well we'll i'll say some stipulations first okay so legally <laughs> i don't know who's listening <laughs> legally i filed with the city as a family fun center and yeah. we're an instructional facility. So nothing on my tax ID says that we're a gym Yeah. in our name. It says hit squad ninja gym. Obviously it was just, that was a thing. So people can easily recognize what you do besides going, what's hit squad besides thinking we actually take people out. Right. So, which we do <laughs> on the side, we, we come in for the pedos, but that's a different time, different time. So for the most part, when they say the word gym, we're not sanctioned as a gym so we can stay open. Second thing is in one day we might see 12 people. So yep. it's not like most people think you come in to a gym and you see 400, 500 people in a day. So it's not like that. We're all spread out. But with what our group is, is we're a very tight knit family. We always say that you're welcome. When people sign a membership, it's not give us your money. It's welcome to the family. Yeah. yeah. So when we close down, luckily 90% of our members paid their dues and it's when we were closed and we felt so bad about it when they kept extending it. We said, we're not going to let you pay again. No way. We feel too bad about this. And then when, we, when they try to shut us down the third time, we were like, no, we're not doing it. Yeah. And the because, parents were thanking us for it. Yeah. As soon as Ducey announced again, our phones were ringing off the hook. Are you guys closing? Are you guys? And we're like, no, we're an instructional facility, just like a gymnastics center. You know, it's not just random people can't just walk in. It's not open to the public to just come and go as you please. There are structured classes. There are limited classes. There's cleanings in between classes. Um, and there's then, no reason not to be open. Yeah, there's no no reason at all because we're not it's, it's not congested or yeah. things like that. You it's know? lame how they pick and choose of who can be and who can't. Well, be. when we look at it and it's a health issue where people are getting sick, why are you closing the things that make people still healthy? Yes, and that's what Amen. I don't get. Amen. That's the thing they don't promote is health. Like right. people should take vitamins and fucking you know, yeah, you know, it's fucked. Big pharma don't make money off that. True. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I did read that um, when I was looking up the your American Ninja stuff that you ha you have your own farm, urban farm. Um, like yeah, I live in Tempe, and in when I started having kids, we we really started looking into everything that's in the food we eat, and <coughs> if you really dig into it, it's pretty it's pretty sad how many things they'll put in there to as filler uh, to obviously make their profit margins higher and all that. So. You know, we, we decided we weren't going to waste the land we did have, which isn't much. It's like an 80 by 40 backyard because we're like smack dab in the middle of Tempe. So, yeah. but we set up garden beds. We, we farm our own tilapia. So, you know, I wanted to teach my kids right off the bat that, hey, you don't have to depend on a grocery store. You don't have to depend on all this stuff. I wish and I had that one. The fresher the food <laughs> is, the better it is for your body because the minute you pick something, the the nutrients start degrading like immediately so and then they're getting frozen in the, in the right, grocery yeah. store right so the, the typical less, yeah. like the typical egg you buy from the grocery store has been around for probably 90 days so do you have chickens i do that's cool dude so they get taken and, out by coyotes man you know what they did i walked out one morning and oh. i had a chicken <laughs> sitting in the middle of the grass and i'm like what are you doing out here? And then I started looking around realizing that all my other chickens were gone uh -huh. or there were pieces of them. Yeah. And then part of my coop was all ripped up because they, they get in, that shit in the middle there. of Tempe. Huh? Yeah. Anywhere. <laughs> Tempe, yeah, man. Yeah, anywhere. They take the, uh, uh, like the drainage canals as routes yep. all around town. So. I heard oh, they, sure. they like to eat their heads too first. So you'll just find chicken yeah, with, no, with heads. no heads. Yep. Yeah. It's when I'm assuming when they're, 
ripping them apart. Did you find yeah. a way to keep them out? Like yeah, so I had an opening on the side where my chickens could go in and out during the day, and I just I had to close it off. So now they're just stuck kind of in their coop, which is pretty big. So I guess they can't really complain too much, so. or complain at all. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they'll be complaining soon enough. They're, they ain't laying very well, so it's time for some tacos. Yeah, well, I got a funny story for you. <laughs> <laughs> First time Rambo invited me to his house because he has like a or had a pretty big ninja set up in his living room. You walk to the front door and it's just everything's hanging on the ceiling. Kids are hanging on the walls. A couple mats on the ground to avoid people from dying. <laughs> and um, he invites me over. I'm like, oh, sweet. So I get over there and he, he's like, hey, you hungry? And I'm like, yeah, man, what you got? And he brings me out like this tray of vegetables that he grabbed from his backyard. <laughs> and I said, I thought you asked me if I'm hungry. I was like, what's this? Because I'm like the opposite. I'm like looking for some <laughs> chips, some, uh, some granola, like something not healthy. Yeah. So that was, uh, we kind of clash on that aspect, especially on road trips, because I'm all about the fast food. And I'm like, where do you want to stop? And he's like, not Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you have to bring your own shit or how do you do that? Uh, I will on some stuff, but I mean, when I'm on the road, you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. So, but like if we can go somewhere where, you know, it's a steak and salad and stuff, then I'm I'm game for that over McDonald's for sure. Yeah, because that's one thing that most people don't realize outside of the TV show is what you see because that's what you know. It's American Ninja Warrior. But there's actually leagues that we travel around all over the yeah. country that compete year round. We usually are in a different state every at least once a month competing. Oh, wow. and you that's guys what, are competing yourself? Yeah, we're actually oh, in cool. world championships in two weeks in Holy Las Vegas. Shit. So yeah. it keeps you fresh, keeps our kids fresh. We travel with 15 competitive kids all over the country with us. So it's actually a pretty cool deal. It's really fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's bad. Because Ninja Warriors, once a year, and it's a total of two days. Yeah. So they, they drag it out on TV <laughs> to make it look like you're there for months, but you're only there in – for you run the first days one day you have about eight hours of sleep and then you're running the second day but on tv it looks like oh city the city yeah, qualifier all, now the city we'll, finals we'll and, see we'll see him back in two weeks for this but it's the next night yeah so i gotta i gotta make make fun of some something i saw uh we watched um the interview that you did with uh joe dana on uh news channel whatever oh okay and that dude was so fucking weird did that shit weird you out dude because he was weird man he looked the, the like the, it was like the morning show right yeah yeah the dude it looked was, like he was fucking he was uh, like full a, makeup a full makeup <laughs> yeah he wouldn't yeah. look look at you guys he would always look in the camera and yeah. like touched you weird and shit i was like dude you guys had to be like <laughs> i to bring that up i was i was i was pretty <laughs> ner- <laughs> i was pretty nervous like i get i get super stage fright like Fuck that yeah, yeah. so i was i was sweating bullets up there so maybe he could feel how nervous i was and oh, he was man. like i can't look at this fool this is gonna make me nervous <laughs> No, a lot of those newscasters are weird as fuck. Oh, yeah, man. Were you nervous when weird. you did the show, The American Ninja Warrior? Were you nervous for that? Oh, yeah, that's terrified. The... Dude, you look like you were composed, though. While you're I doing... have a secret. It's called Xanax. <laughs> no way. <laughs> There's no way you did that on Xanax, bro. Yeah, bro. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. my God, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Do, you, so... do you remember it? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I have really, really bad anxiety, and I used to do... <laughs> I used to sell life insurance and like there were times I was so nervous that I would like knock on the door and run like no joke. Dude, you, you, so I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> so I have a prescription for Xanax and, and w- when you take it on a somewhat regular basis, uh, get a it's tolerance. Not, yeah. It's not like, it's not like it is when you take it for fun. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> well, you're, you're not, ta- when you're taking it on for when it's needed, it's like, a lifesaver at yeah, that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, sure. it does. yeah. It makes it makes you really tired, and and those those flushes of panic don't happen. Um, but because the adrenaline is so high on Maybe the show, like, out of control. Yeah, like there like, were a few times when I'm like, um, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I, well, I didn't want it, but like, I just had to kind of tell myself, like, like I'm I'm right here. Like I can't not do it now. Yeah. So, you know, it it, it was crazy. It was. It, yeah, that's always the first question people ask. What's the hardest part about being on the show? And then we always look at and go, not throwing up. Yeah. Like before yeah. you go, because you just, I actually got lucky this last season because I didn't get a chance to think about it. I got picked early to run. My daughter was coming on stage with me. My buddy Tage was supposed to watch her and bring her up to the stage. Literally one minute, 
<laughs> one minute before I'm supposed to be up there, my daughter's like, I got to pee. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? So yeah. I'm like picking her up. And there's, it's it's not like the glam and glory that you think about on a set in Hollywood. Like There's like a trailer and it's way over there. So I'm picking her up and running and she just starts peeing her pants. And I'm like, oh, so now I'm covered in pee. They call me on stage. My daughter's supposed to go up there and dance. And she's like, I'm not going up there. I was like, you're going up there. <laughs> She's like, I'm not going up there with pee pants. I was like, you're going up there. And so uh, she's like, no. And I was like, all right, I'll give you a PlayStation Switch or a Nintendo Switch if you go up there. She's like, fine. <laughs> He's bribing it. So, yeah, yeah. so you could see it because my this is aired on, it actually made the television show. Like I said, 120 people compete, but only 20 people get on TV. So I actually got a snippet on TV and you could see her. Walking out on stage, arms crossed, like she is just pissed. pissed off, yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be here, right? <laughs> and then I'm, I'm walking out there and I'm trying to hype up the crowd. And then she gets in this little circle, arms crossed, looking at the ground, just like about to kill somebody. And then she just starts dancing like this Fortnite dance. Yeah, and then, she busts out yeah, the Fortnite. Yeah, so then the crowd goes wild. And then um, that, that's my pee pants story. And she's like, you can't tell me. That. So, <laughs> so she won't be old enough to listen to this for quite a while. So yeah. She'll never know. It's always cool when they add like the the kids like when you did the little um i forgot that dance move and then your kids the dab, dab and, and man yeah, i get i, I get so much and shit yeah. for that so <laughs> i mean it i mean it is cheesy. it was about five years it's too cheesy late. but it's like I, it's a dad thing that you probably did with your kids yeah. you know what I mean? so that's how i look at it so i was like that's cool you know yeah so Who they, they, fuck whoever says that they, yeah. fuck them yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you, you're, they didn't fuck it. they didn't complete that course who oh him no oh. our, our buddy oh. Tage, he's always making fun of me but yeah well, your friend's gotta give you shit oh your yeah. friend's gotta give you shit but no they did they like he said you know the lady's like what are you gonna do that's cool you know before you run and i'm like i'm gonna like i'm gonna not throw up is my goal because that's how i feel right now so but once you're on the course blackout you know, yeah it's just straight zone and that's the uh, first time you see all those parts of the course. So before you actually run, you get to walk through and they have somebody from the company do a demo. So they're like, okay, this is this obstacle and this is how it's done. And a guy will go through it and that's all you have to go off of. So it's nice to go later in the night because you can watch people and it'll slowly evolve how people do things. Get a um, strategy. Yeah. It, they, we always call it beta. So you'll get to see a bunch of people do it. And you don't get to, you don't get to try it. No, no, no. Nobody gets to try Nobody anything. You just get to see it. Yeah. So so you don't ever want to get picked first. Yeah, no, you want to go bad. because yeah, what'll happen sure. is as it's a TV show, if people are keep falling on something or they're not making it past a certain spot, even like some of the good people, the producers then want people to get further. So they'll actually go out there and make adjustments. I was make gonna ask about easier. this because I know. How reality TV and stuff yeah. like that works. So, so they'll like, make adjustments for things <laughs> to make sure people start getting through where there might be a difficult spot. For everybody, not just well, everybody after after that's yeah, fucked that's up. Fucked up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they don't have any of the top guys go first either. Yeah. So how how do they pick that order? They say it's random, but it, there's no way it's random. <laughs> no for, way. for all the no names, it's probably random, but like for the big names, they'll put them towards the end. Wait, well, when you went into it, you were a no-name, right? Yeah, I ran right in the middle. I, I, I was supposed to run before midnight because I had the kids, and when I asked about it, they basically told me to go fuck myself, and I'd run when it was my time. Yeah. So they Which ended up taking... 3.30 in the morning. Yeah, they ended up taking a lunch <laughs> break. Shit. Yeah, they filmed from 9 in the morning till... No, 9 at night. Not, uh, yeah, 9 at night till about 6 in the morning. So they, their union, so midnight hits, shut down for an hour for production, you know what I mean, for lunch. Lunch, yeah. So we come back at 1.00 hang out yeah i think i ran the first night at about 2 two thirty in the morning so they're but, more concerned about getting their shots for the drama than they are the competition because it's a show 100 percent. yeah the, so. it doesn't matter everybody says the same thing how do you get on the show what do i got to do to train and i was like it's really not about training you yeah. can be the best ninja in the country and not get on the show because you don't have a story yeah like a story and a personality yeah. and yeah. The, even the personality you don't really have to have i mean i'm pretty lame but some people have uh, you have it, to have a background you gotta have a background and we joke this kid tage that we keep talking about he's uh <laughs> this young kid that we pretty much brought up with us and he kicks our butt most of the time but he <laughs> is dad's dad belong runs a church um blue collar homeschooled never drink 12, a beer. 12 brothers and sisters they've yeah. adopted like six or seven autistic kids 
Yeah, so we joke with them and say, you had such a perfect life that your parents wanted you to get on Ninja Warrior so bad, they adopted nine kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you so have, a, have story. a good story. Yeah, yeah. So those are some great parents, right? Yeah. So he actually made it on this this season that we just got back a couple of weeks from filming. So I'll he'll say. be on TV in a couple of weeks. But um, really yeah. cool kid, really cool family. But again, it's not about how good you are. It's about your story. So what were your yeah. guys' stories that they picked you? I got on because I was I was 38. Uh, is that the, considered older than most of the competitors? Yeah, most of these kids. This when the year I ran, they allowed nineteen year olds in. So most of the competitors are between the ages of twenty and twenty and thirty. Tops. Dude, I'm your age, so when I saw you doing that, I was like, "Fuck those." Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what <laughs> represent the Everybody older keeps guys. telling me that in, in in the leagues, they're like, "Oh, you should go to the the forty and over and just clean up." And I'm like, "Nope, I'm gonna squash these little fuck sixteen yeah, year olds." Fuck so. Yeah, totally. And so I can't do it, and then maybe I'll go there, but. I don't know. I had the the urban backyard, you know what I mean? The urban farm in the back, the kids and all that. And they're like, hey, this no, is no, a cool no, no. thing. His name's Rambo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. great the last name. Point. And the last great name's Rambo. Point, the dude so. that writes the jokes had like the easiest time with him. Yeah, the commentators so loved like fucking using him. <laughs> so, Sylvester Stallone doesn't yeah, have shit yeah, on yeah. or whatever he says. So <laughs> this is well, John but what sucks is Rambo's like, long lost son. <laughs> yeah, I got on. I, I did well, except for Vegas. And then no callback like i i've applied now twice and they're like they didn't even look at your story like john Ra or uh, yeah. ryan rambo he's in <laughs> yeah but like they're, now they're like well, i got you, no story yeah. you know what i mean they told it so that's it they're like what else you got and you know we did a lot of stuff with the gym and and some non-profit work and and things like that and they're still like eh, you're boring yeah, but that's the other thing is you have to decide, <laughs> do you want to sell out? Yeah, and yeah. I don't know if you want to sell. Like we had this conversation when we started. You, we're all recovering. We've all done a bunch of drugs. We all had party. This guy used to be in a band. Yeah. We all had mohawks. So they want that side. They Did want you to tell on that side? No, no. That's the thing is they wanted him to that, That's oh, what they want. So yeah. he's yeah. like, I'm, I'm not going to really throw my family under the bus so that I can get a call Good back for on you the guys. show. Fuck yeah. yeah. So Yeah, have some pride. I was like, I'm not going to exploit, not for this. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was gonna say I did see um, uh, when you uh, you and your your son I think was in your ho home and uh, the room that you were hanging and fucking swinging around and there was these beautiful fucking guitars on the wall that you're like almost <laughs> kicking off the yeah, fucking wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those were that's from part my, of this course you got to go around. Them. That was part of my other life. Back, I've lived about three or four of them. It feels well, like fuck. I, I was in, I played in bands growing up and shit. What, yeah. what, were you like in a punk band and shit or uh, the Mohawks? It was, was it was a little heavier than that. Oh fuck yeah! You know I really I'm I'm really into like. Uh, Lamb of God and Bless the Fall. Yeah. Dude, you know within the ruins? Kind of, so, what's that? Within you, the you know, ruins? Within the ruins? They sound familiar. Dude, I'm going to fucking show them okay. to you after the podcast. This band will fucking change yeah. your life. The guitar player is from another planet. Heavy as fuck. <laughs> dude, it, I'm not joking, dude. This fucking... This is the baddest band ever, dude. I'm, not yeah, playing, those, like, I'm glad you like metal, dude. Yeah, those Shit. guitars are ESPs. Yeah. They're my babies. And That's then I got dope. the uh, dual rectifier hiding in the closet still. So do you still jam? Nah, I haven't touched my guitar in like ten years. Oh no, yeah. that dude. Sucks. You know what? Um, I, I pull it out once in a while. It's fun just to sit down, and it's one of the few things like I could actually take my mind away from everything else and just kind of fuck around with it. You right, know? Like right. even when I watch movies or do other shit, I still think about other stuff. But when I pull out the guitar for some reason. I could really just fucking like. I'm waiting for my kids to be get old enough and have some patience kids... to do some music because I've got them a drum set and they like hammered on it for a few months and now best it's thing gone, you can so. do. You're like the coolest dad ever. Can you <laughs> <me>? <laughs> no, like yeah, fucking yeah, seriously, dude. Like I know, but my kids, <laughs> my my kids are like entitled little turds now. They're like, oh, this sucks. I'm like, Pff. yeah, yes, you guys. We don't talk even know. about that a lot on the show <laughs> that. You know, they're really like, into like um, electronics and video yep. games and stuff. Or, yeah, 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 that's a thing now. So I got sucked into Fortnite, so at least I can play with them to do something. Plus, he's married, so he doesn't get to serenade any hot chicks anymore with yeah. the guitars. <laughs> <laughs> Once you got a chick, you stop playing. <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason why we're in bands, right? <laughs> that's why you play music, man. That's yeah. why you're in a band. Right, yeah, as soon as I got married, I'm all on the wall. Done. I, a lot of people, though, do go through a phase i know you did where you didn't play guitar for years well it's because i was doing heroin yeah i know but <laughs> <laughs> still a fucking phase dude uh, like i like complete i didn't give a sh i actually talked shit about music new music I, I thought it was a waste of time and then after i got off of drugs i spent like a whole month just 
getting feeling real emotions and real dopamine coming back and yeah. i was laughing and crying and i got went through all the old music i went to and mm. i was right back where i was you know what i mean i really is like i don't know music's my favorite thing yeah, in the world mine too. It's my number one you know next to next to doing ninja that's that's my other escape for sure yeah you have to have something like that where you can just get away and and be on you know your own type thing whether it's mentally or yeah or or just getting out you know, a lot of people go out in the middle of the fucking woods and do crazy shit. But uh, I'll take mushrooms. I'll take mushrooms. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. I was actually. Oh, just, I need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I went whitewater rafting on mushrooms. What? <laughs> That's fucking crazy, bro. Like how many, how many grams? Like a heroic dose? No, no. We just ate a couple caps. That was like okay. probably an that's eighth, fine. maybe. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, oh, that, it was that's not fine. Cool. It was not fine. <laughs> 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 that was not cool. But I like. It was Dude, just a bad you didn't trip. have fun. Well, no, I had. The, it, so I have a lot of crazy stories, and this will be a quick one. But so it was. Literally in Colorado, we were going down the rapids. We took our lacrosse helmets and we took the face masks off and popped a bunch of shrooms and we get in the water and me and my buddy that popped the shrooms decided we want to share a tube. So two dudes on a tube and we're big dudes. So it wasn't that great of an idea. Well, the pack of tubes, our buddies get in front of us. And so it's just the, us two going down and it's around five o'clock at night and we just hear this, hey, hey, you. And we're like tripping, right? <laughs> and we look over <laughs> and there's this old guy that had fallen down the mountain that's sitting down there at the bottom and we're like piling over to him. And he's like, Hey, sonny's he's like, thank God you heard me yelling. He's like, I've been here for eight hours. <laughs> and we're just like, is this, we're looking at each other and we're like, is this, is this like real, is this happening? Like you gotta be dying. dying laughing, right? So, man. so or he's like, all right, I need you to put your arms under my shoulders and pick me up and I'll lock my knees back into place. And we're like, Oh my God, no fucking way is this real. <laughs> So we pick him up and he does like this little shuffle and they lock back in and we carry him literally back up about 20 feet to the road where his car's parked and adios he goes. And then we get look at him and we're like, dude, I can't get back on that raft, man. That shit was fucked up. <laughs> that, that only happened because you ate mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're 100% right. The weirdest right. shit happens like when there are mushrooms. And then when it happens, it's like, you know, amplified. It's, it's yeah, so it weird. was amplified. Weird, that was the, saying, the yeah. nature, the sounds. Yeah, yeah. Like we could hear everything. And everybody that had, there was literally 20 people that had gone in front of us didn't hear him yelling. And we're the last two. Yep. Literally, if we wouldn't have rescued that dude, he would have been there all night. So thank you, mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> I Fucking... always say on mushrooms, the universe will guide you. They guided you to save that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. That was my last time. They teach you a lesson. <laughs> 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 oh, you know, no plans of doing that again? No, no, I'm pretty scared of everything nowadays. I mean, I Me I too. literally had some crazy, crazy life, and thank God phones weren't around back there with video cameras yeah. and all that crazy shit. We're with you, man. But um, yeah, now it's all all shooting straight and narrow, and yeah, you get to a certain point where you decide whether something real quick. you decide whether you want to stay alive or not, right? Yeah, well, the drinking didn't really stop because I hit rock bottom like a lot of people. It stopped because my hangovers were lasting like five days, and I would start getting depressed. Like yep. that. Like when you get that fix, it's Friday night. I need to go out. I got that Friday night. I'm like, dude, no way. I started thinking about the hangover. Uh, uh-uh. and then just just lost it for me. Yeah. Did you guys know each other when you guys were drinking and stuff? Or thank, God, thank we didn't. God we did not. <laughs> yeah. No, we met. Oh yeah, through the through the ninja. Oh, so yeah. we, a few years ago, um, the company ATS who actually builds and sets up the courses for Ninja Warrior, they were going to put on um, something called the Ninja Warrior Experience, and it was going to be at the Cardinals stadium oh, out there oh, over there in Glendale. And it was like, you know, 90 bucks if you wanted to just run the course, or it was like 160 if you wanted to actually compete for money. Um, so we all had signed up for that. We're like, this will be super awesome. We'll have some of the pros there. We'll get to see how we, you know, stack up. And uh, we trained and trained, and that's kind of how we met and, and started hanging out and really working on, on our game. And then what was it, three days? Three days before we were supposed to compete, they're like, "Oh, it's canceled." Aww. So that was a that was a big bummer. But that's that got a big group of people, um, kind of together, training, hanging out. And, that's the good thing that came out of it, right? So that's like now when he says it's a family, it like it really is. Like it created I, a community. I came from a broken home, you know, divorced parents when I was twelve. Uh, you know, the drinking, all that. I lost a brother. This, that. I'm not not close with anybody. Um, like I was, but now I have these people and we're all kind of on the same page. You know what I mean? Like 
there's a lot of us who don't drink anymore. We don't do any of that stuff because we're the extremists. We can't just go to the restaurant and, and have a few drinks with dinner. It's eat and get smashed and make a scene. And, and that's, that's the only time it's fun. And unfortunately it's not fun for anybody else. So, um, the community we have at the, at the Ninja gym, it's for me, it's like nothing else I've ever had. Cause like I've been on sports teams and you have, you have the camaraderie with, with the, the other athletes, but you still have, uh, I don't want to say jealousy necessarily, but you do, you have the people that are like, they don't want you to do good. They want your spot or mm. things like that. Whereas with the Ninja community, it's not like that. Like I want to beat them, but if they beat me, you're happy. I'm them. happy yeah. because they've obviously they crushed it. You know what I mean? And they did, they did really well. And, and people have good days and bad days. And, uh, you know, it's all about, uh, like he always, he always says, it's always about, overcoming failures and obstacles and like that's not just at the ninja gym but it translates to everyday life totally which it's very is, important for males especially so, to have that in their life right so that's our biggest thing we actually hooked up with a, a company called step it up um that raises a fundraiser and we go and we talk at their schools about that you know eating right overcoming failure that's badass at, dude you know you it's see a, these people who are I don't want to say like the YouTubers who are rich or whatever, but you see these people who are famous and everyone thinks, oh, that was so easy. I got it. but they, you don't know how many times they failed yeah. before they got Joe Rogan just posted a cool quote about that of somebody else who was saying like, you know, if you, when they buy a nice car, people just say, oh, it must be nice to have that. But they don't see that. They don't see I'm what it's working 24 yeah. seven. I'm hustling on like five different things, asshole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. how, how often are you guys training? Dude, we live at that gym, bro. The only day we're not there is Sundays, so. Yeah, well, hardcore training maybe twice a week. Yeah. Like I said, you can't really. Yeah, because it's your it's gym, you have to be there. But like hardcore training, you can't do it that often. Mm -hmm. Not with this. No. Mm, yeah. Not at our age. No. Yeah, and in just in general, you can't you can't strain those tendons because tendons aren't quite like muscles, and you use a lot of that stuff when you're hanging and and shoulders and things that and that takes a lot of time to heal. You need. So a lot it, of days off. Is it kind of like um, a fight where, like you said, you guys do these um, uh, tournaments and stuff all over the country now, I guess. And you guys are just kind of like really ramp it up before a tournament to get ready for the tournament type right. deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I gained a bunch of weight. I'm usually around 140 and now I'm sitting at 160 and I was hoping to get some good training in at this weight and then cut before Worlds. Um, but unfortunately, I put on the weight and then I hurt myself because of the weight and I haven't been able to train as much as I've wanted to lately. So. But you're, there's no like weight class. Is this, you go no, no, no. against whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just one of those things where you want to hold 140 pounds off the ground or do you want to hold 215? No, totally, yeah. 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 I totally. just said, screw diets. I hate them. I try to cut weight for, for the show. And then now I'm just like, I'm just going to have to get stronger. Yeah. That's, that's their, our goal is just to get stronger. And that cutting weight shit is scary too. <laughs> It ain't fun. Yeah. It's for the birds. Yeah. Some of those people get really, really sick, man. Fuck you can't. Yeah. It's, it's, you got to do it right. And everybody's body's different. Yes. So what works for me isn't going to work for everybody or even for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. That shit's nuts. Do you guys have a lot of recovery after a competition? Like just from maybe pains and strains and aches and stuff like that? Or uh, does that make sense? You know, people like, you ask us like up? what we do and, to, to for this i'm like the worst one to ask like i'm always the person do what i say don't do what i do sort of guy <laughs> so i get done i just hold my arm like a baby because it hurts so bad yeah. and then i i probably should ice it but i just don't and then the thing about uh ninja and the competitions is it's the mental thing you you fall on something and you're like damn it and the only way to get over that bad feeling and not doing good at a competition is to do another competition yeah. so once you do that you're in the gym the next day going okay i gotta get ready yeah so but the biggest fear is moving forward and like getting to those levels of gains is getting hurt and then feeling like you just for the last two months, it's all going to be washed away. But really you take a month off and let your body fully heal. You come back physically stronger. It's yeah. really weird. And you see that huge in this sport, but mentally you're weaker, but physically you're stronger. Yeah. It's like the opposite of UFC. Yeah. Right. When they train, that's what it seems like. So Surprise, surprised you guys don't use like CBD creams and shit. You guys don't use CBD at all? I tried it. I mean, this girl brought it in. I rubbed it on my elbow, but I didn't really. Didn't really I've, yeah, I've used that stuff, but I do like I do. My wife's in school to be an acupuncture, so oh, I nice. use like we do dry needling, and I've been to her her facility. 
um, things like that. E stems I use. I'll take I'll take baths and soak. You know what I mean. So I do try to do things to recover, especially. What is the um, the cryogenic stuff? You ever do that stuff? The cryogenic s- freezing stuff. See, yeah, we went and did it once, and I didn't think it helped. Maybe it's got to be one of those things where you actually do it yeah. a few times. I mean, I I understand the concept behind it. I just don't know that that necessarily worked for me. Yeah. Plus, it's expensive. I mean, yeah. we, we are pro athletes, but when we talk about pro athletes, we're at the bottom, bottom yeah. of the barrel. And even with our gym now, I mean, we open in August or uh, excuse me, October. We haven't paid ourselves anything. I mean, no. we work side jobs to make them pay, make it happen. Yeah, especially with what's going on now. Yeah, especially with what's going on now. So spending the hundred and fifty bucks for a cryo membership, going and you know all that stuff to, to stay healthy is very, especially expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Super expensive. The level yeah. that we are at, yeah, it's it's retarded but we try to make trades with people like we went in and offered the guy one of somebody in tempe who does the cryo thing we were going to trade him hey come to the gym well and he was like nope (laughs) (laughs) i want i've wanted to try it um but i haven't had the experience yet the cryo yeah the cryo yeah yeah Yeah. i know dan does that a lot yeah i've there's a lot of ninjas out there that swear by it but like I said, or I, the ice bass, but that's miserable. Yeah. Oh, that oh is, yeah. I, fuck that. I, I used, used to do those in college. Yeah. Fuck that. Shit, <laughs> man. That shit's crazy. That's like Wim Hof. You do it. You know, Wim Hof. Uh-uh. He does like, these cr- crazy breathing techniques and hops in a fucking ice bath. And yeah. Claims it fucking cures his fucking autoimmune diseases and all kinds of crazy shit. So. Hmm. Well, it, that's all inflammation. So totally. as long as you get it down, you know, and shocking your body, the hot, cold, cold, hot, cold yeah. stuff. Yep. Yep. What's that massage with that metal thing that that lady scrapes us with? What's that called? Well, in Chinese medicine, it's called gua sha. Oh, dude, it's brutal. Yeah, but but that's it... probably the thing I noticed the most recovery was from is when that lady dragged that metal scraper what is down it? my arms. <laughs> <laughs> so they take like it's usually a like a jade stone or metal in his case, and they they scrape across your muscle tissue like the fascia and the oh, the, yeah. the you can feel it scraping through and it brings the blood to the surface yeah. and so what that does is it's supposed to help promote healing that's the whole concept behind cupping oh yeah yeah is it is it brings the stagnant blood up and out and then your body can yeah, bring itchy. in new stuff and yeah and it gets rid of what's sitting in there yeah but so. when he says scraping Imagine that 10 times harder. Yeah. It's more like grinding. Yeah, yeah. Like if you don't come out of there covered in bruise, then she didn't do it right. Yeah. They really go through like the muscle fibers. You can feel it. It's kind of like those those uh, massages where they use their knuckles. What do they call that? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? No? You got to pay extra for that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's some like really painful type of massage that's well, super painful. Well, my chiropractor painful. uses his fucking elbow. Yeah. Like, oh, Dude, I had a lady stand on my back with her feet. Yeah. She had hairy armpits. I fucking had a masseuse come over. She was fucking doing all kinds of crazy shit. I was like, what the fuck? She had hairy armpits and shit. Oh. I, have I, a, I have a deep Better. tissue massage therapist and she's like, it's like getting beat up. But totally. The oh. next day. If I could afford it, I would do that every day. Like, that's really good for your body, actually. Like, just get in there and working those muscles out. But yeah, because that ain't cheap. Yeah. No. You got to buy in bulk like Costco. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, there's also that, um, the float tank place. Yeah, the salt deprivation tank. Yeah. Yeah. You guys ever do that? You guys ever thought about it? I can't be alone in my head like that. (laughs) Deprivation chamber. (laughs) I'd last about 10 minutes before I freak out. <laughs> yeah. I still want to try that too, actually. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah. You've got to get in there with some good edibles or some mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it, man. I'd be like Joe Rogan and fucking own one and just go in it whenever you want. That's the yeah. way to do it. Yeah. Um, figure out how to fucking build one of those motherfuckers. But So um, how, how do people uh, get in your gym like how do they become part of uh your group well funny story is that we're really defensive right now so when people call we're like who are you why are you calling me (laughs) yeah what what news station do you work for yeah (laughs) so well you have the right to be yeah yeah. i mean we do have the right to be open but it's it's we have a gym that's located in in a in a big business most of the people in that uh complex went out of business there's no foot traffic and so we're like secluded which is nice like a lot of these crossfit gyms are in the middle of a of an area where you see them running down the street and then people are like, oh, they're working out, call them yeah. in sort of thing. So luckily we're secluded. So 
even though we have a right to be open, we try not to draw attention because like I said, we don't want to ruin a good thing. So we are accepting new members. People come in and they try a class. It's a trial. We always tell people, we're not going to just let you throw your money at us. We want you to actually enjoy it. If people don't come to class for a month, we're not like 24 hour fitness and we just keep collecting and collecting and collecting and collecting. We call and be like, Hey, we're going to cancel you out because we don't want to keep taking your money. You're obviously hurt or something come up. So when people do come for the trial, 99% love it. 99% or a hundred percent people are pretty sore. And we always tell people go home, think about it. If this is something you really want to do, come back and we'll sign you up. Um, and then that's how it is. A lot of people just want to try it for the first time just to see how it is. Some people love the atmosphere when they walk in and want to be part of the family right away. Cause again, we don't judge. You can be any type of person. Um, Careful. sexuality. <laughs> what <matter>. about kids <laughs> and stuff? Kids, same thing. Come in, we do a trial class. And if they're the same thing, we are like, the parents are like, all right, where do we sign? We're like, come back next week and then we'll sign you up to make sure. Cause yeah. I don't. Like you said, we, everyone the first time is excited. They're like, this is the greatest thing ever. And we want you to make sure that this is what you want to do. Especially with kids. Right. Because the last thing we want is the, the kid that's this the parent is forcing them to come. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah, you know it what sucks. I mean? It takes the fun out of it for me. You know what I mean? So, and I like to have fun always. Yeah. So what's a class like? What do you guys do during a class? So it's pretty simple. We, we obviously we warm up and then we have a course already set up 12 to 14 obstacles. Um, we break them into smaller groups. Usually there's a five to one coach to student ratio. We have that's even with the kids or adults. And then they go through and they get to practice each individual obstacle. And then at the end of the class, they get to run the whole thing oh, like they sweet. would do on the show. So that's they can nice. actually feel what it feels like. Cause like I said, when you're doing one thing here, one thing there, but when you're like, now you got to do everything within two minutes. All of a sudden now you feel like you're going to die. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we switch the course up every two weeks. So a lot of these gymnastics places have little ninja things in them now, little ninja programs. And people are like, oh, are you worried about them? You know, your competition. I'm like, no, that we're not. Because those little kids are going to go there. And for three months, they're going to have great time. And they're going to learn some basic skills. And then they're going to find out about us. And we kind of hold ourselves up as like elite where we train the top ninja. We roll into a competition. We went to one in California the other day. The owner of the gym, like we made this tough because we heard you guys were coming. Like yeah. we, we are very known for good work ethic. We have fun with the kids that are just there for fun, but the kids that are there to train hard, like the classes are two hours. Same with the adults. We travel around and we usually finish on top. And it's, that's cool. It's, yeah. That's really cool. We've always got someone on the podium from our gym. That's dope. Yeah. And that was our that was our main goal when we started was people were like, Oh shit. The so what's boys, go- the boys from Hit Squad are here. What's going <laughs> yeah. on with that national community right now? Is it is it is it staying strong or is it fracturing because of all this that's going on with COVID? What's going on with the national community? Of, of the Ninja Gym. Well, so you're going to Vegas, right? So. Well, yeah, that's for that's outside of the TV show. That's for the yeah, the, yeah. The, I'm the, talking about the national community of you know everybody that does this, not just the TV show, but yeah, we we lost some gyms. Some gyms closed down. I mean, we yeah. were we were close to closing down too. So we we can definitely feel their pain. If you have we have a 3,500 square foot facility, some people start and they have a little bit of financial backing and they open up with like a 10 to 15 thousand. Oh, now man. you're looking at. Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month just in rent. Just in rent. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. And you're going, and you got to stay shut down. I mean, that's two months. That's forty grand. Yeah, so a lot of money. Luckily, we started not small, but not not over our the top, and so we were able to make it. And a lot of people are on board. Like usually at World Championships, there's over two thousand people there. When I saw the sign up a couple weeks ago, there was right around five hundred. So we still have parents that we stay in contact with, but won't let their kids come to the gym because they're como, you know, COVID yeah. phobes. But we also don't judge them. We say we understand when they're ready to come back, the doors open, you know, sort of thing. Right. Because like whether or not I believe in something that doesn't mean it's not real for somebody else. So, you know, like he said, we're not we're not mad. We're not judging. Hey, when you're ready, when you feel safe. Yeah, I think the best best way that to act about this whole thing is. You know, you can have your own feelings. Just don't be an asshole about it. Dude, just that's don't be life. An asshole about it. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Hey, fucking man. Yeah. That is life. Amen. That's fucking but, uh, exactly. But yeah, right. I mean, we, you know, a lot of people came together. Luckily, like, like we said, uh, when, when we first shut down in March, when they made us shut down, um, we immediately were like, hey, we're going to suspend and freeze accounts. We're not going to charge this, that. Then we looked into the help. And we hadn't been open long enough. They're like, well, we need two years worth of records before we can evaluate or give you any sort of compensation or this or that. And we're like, 
well, we've only been open for, you know, five months. What do you want? So we found another place and they were like, yeah, we can help you out. Did you pay your bills for April? And we're like, yes. Well, you don't qualify. And I'm like, yeah. Hold Is this on. government help you're talking about? Or? The second one was some private. Yeah. Small uh, businesses get fucked. Yeah. But I was like, hold on, man. If you're going to jump on me and say, oh, well, I don't qualify because I paid April. Like we're all, we're halfway through March. If yeah. you're not ready to pay April already, then you're going out anyway like this doesn't make any sense so. i felt like um there was a lot of those programs that were there was a lot of fuckery going on in there well what happened where they like, were trying to get your fucking business you know what i mean if you didn't pay back something and they said it was to help but what happened i don't know if you heard about what happened to chase no they got a class action lawsuit against them because they sandbagged all the huge loans and they ended up making something like six billion dollars in processing Fuck. fees so that's why that Shake Shack gave money back because the the public went hold on. This is crazy, you know. You're supposed to help out the small people, not the people who have billions in yeah, the like bank. The and LA the CEOs, and yeah, shit yeah. Like that. yeah, yeah. So, so I think a lot of gyms actually were able to do the same thing. They were able to reach out to uh, their their clients and like because it's a family, we're like, hey, we're not asking for anything for free, but if you're financially in a situation where you can still pay your monthly fee, then like, please do. And six months down the road, when things are back to normal or whatever, we'll prorate you for two months or whatever. Like we'll, we'll make it up to you. But at this point, this is kind of what we need to happen. And everyone was like, absolutely no problem. And I think that happened a majority across the board for, for most places. Like he said, I mean, obviously if you're, you're you're spending fifteen grand a month in in rent. That might be hard to be able to have that kind of stuff come in, especially if you're a place that is only running birthdays and like bounce house type of deal, where you don't actually have like a family oriented, yeah, regular you know, face to face clientele yeah. type of yeah. thing. So, um, how uh, I got a quick question: How does how does it work when you guys are coming up with new ideas? Are are you building those things yourselves? Are you do people make them that you buy them from? You talking about the course? Yeah, yeah. New obstacles. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say that the fact that we travel around and compete all over the country gives us an edge because I can't build everything at my gym and I don't have that kind of imagination. Second, I laugh. So when we go to these gyms and go, oh, that's cool. Then I come back and go, hey, Rambo, can you build that? That's awesome. That's cool. That's cool. I so, love shit like that. Yeah. So Take like a picture he, of it. <laughs> he is the one that is is he's more imaginative than I am. But he comes to me with the idea, hey, I want to do something like this. And then I've been doing construction since I was like sixteen. So I'm like, all right, let me figure out how we're gonna build this and make That's it happen. Fucking cool. So you're handy as fuck. Yeah, I can weld. I can do. I mean, That's do sick. it all. So we yep. built our gym from the ground up in literally thirty days. I was going to ask you if you either build on your own or if like you hire people that know how to do it. Do, to we had, it. we had a lot of people help that volunteered, which we were extremely thankful for, you know I mean? Come in and paint walls and, and help screw things together and stuff like that. And we were able to, you know, get it done quickly because we were supposed to open in, it was like June and we signed our lease in May and then we didn't get the keys until October. So wow. it was like, yeah, we kind of did things backwards. <laughs> For most people, they get like this big, big financial backing. And they're like, okay, I want to, now I want to do a business. Well, we're like, we're going to do a business and we have no money. Let's, let's <laughs> but we got a lot of hope. Yeah, but you, at least you didn't get caught up in some crazy loan like you guys are yeah, talking exactly. about where you're, you know, you're having to f pay 15 grand a month or yeah. something like that. So when we were opening, we were... Rambo had a buddy that had a construction. He's like, hey, this guy has all these pipes in the ceiling. If you come take them down, you could keep them. Sweet. So we got side deals like that. We were yeah, always looking. Dope. Somebody was moving. Hey, we'll take that stuff for you if you give us this, you know, yada, yada. So we did a lot of trading to get the gym open. And now that it is open again, we look back and go, you know, it was it was definitely stressful. But that's one of the things that we like to um, talk about on the show a lot is is like organic growth in local businesses. And that's kind of what you guys did. You're growing organically with a clientele. You're all helping to kind of grow the business. And uh, that's really fucking cool. That's really cool, especially when you got a lot of people who put love into it. And then that grows that that family bond right. grows even thicker. Well, I've always, I've always heard my whole life and it was a hard thing to swallow was, was do what you love and then the money will come. Yep. And finally I, after hustling and lawsuits and lost businesses, this, that I was just threw my hands up and was all, fuck it. This is what I want to do. This is what we're going to do. 
it was it after we, doing American Ninja Warrior that inspired it? We we had planned actually we wanted to do our own thing before getting oh, okay. on the show. Okay. We had we had planned this for for quite a long time, and then uh, certain things fell through. Certain people came into our lives that were you know extremely important, and then now have gone, and absolutely made it possible for us to be where we're at. And you know like everything happens for a reason for sure. at some point. You know what I mean? So people don't realize how important networking is. Right. Especially when you're trying to grow a business. Like we always talk about, there should be like a networking class for kids in high school because that is one of the most, especially these days. Yeah. It's one of the most important things you can learn is, Hey, go out there and, and so, somebody will eventually, you know, have something that you guys can work together. Right. for. Networking taxes. Yeah. Laws. Yeah. Rights. Yeah. We need all those in How school. To do bank account and shit. <laughs> yeah. Balance checkbook. Fuck, man. Yeah, the best advice I ever tell people is when you ask someone their name, always follow it up by, what do you do? Yep. Because yeah. if you know those two things, it might not, you you might be asking to wonder what they can do to help you, but it's also, you could be helping them. Amen. Yeah. So I always say, what do you guys do? And then, I cannot even tell you how many times that just works out in everybody's benefit. Cause well, actually I'll probably help you remember the name better too, because yeah. you're adding that extra what to oh, do I'm with it. I'm horrible at names. Yeah, <laughs> <'cause I'm> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Usually you just forget the person's name right away, you know, but if you, if you add that, it may, it might help. Well, you get two options. I'm either going to remember your name or I'm going to remember your Instagram handle, but you don't get both. Yeah. All right. You pick. Yeah. <laughs> I'll meet, I'll meet people at comps that I follow on Instagram and I'm like, Hey, Ninja six, two, eight. <laughs> that's like not their name <laughs> kind of like uh in the gaming world where they all got their, their, game their yeah I, I, I was yeah. on a, a traveling halo team back in the early 2000s and i had two really good friends that i never called by their first name i called them by their gamer tags yeah you know I mean? just that's how i knew them you know <laughs> just from their fucking evil homer and don rizzi yeah but no man as, as long as you guys fucking stay consistent with what you guys are doing i mean your gym's already at a place that's fucking badass like you were saying with our organic community but yeah. five years from now man it's gonna be even fucking bigger and better especially if you guys just pull through all this crazy shit that's happening because our buddy Mike has a jujitsu fucking dojo and he's gone through the absolute craziest shit, putting his yeah. house up fucking yep. his whole family being homeless, moving with the family. And he, he was out of place where he was expanding. Then the COVID shit happened. So it was another fucking curveball that he was thrown at, but um, he's, he's really uh, flourished, you know, well, it also, all that shit. It so. also gives you uh you kind of have a little bit more, reason to love it and to make it work when it's something like that rather than just going to a nine to five hamster wheel job you know um you fall in love with your place and and that makes it a lot easier to go spend 12 hour days there you know 14 hour days there oh yeah building shit i mean yeah. before COVID hit we so we started building what's we opened october we started building september october jesus okay yeah. <laughs> so we started building september from September until April, we hadn't had a day off. Yeah. And I was literally working two jobs. Kind of an hour work at night. I worked at a bar until I got shut down. And then we'd be building backyard gyms for kids uh, to make to make money happen. Uh, but literally, and then that's well, you know you got a good friend when you can spend every single day. <laughs> at least twelve hours all, together. All day, every day. With no break. Yeah. And I guess that's how you should test out your wife before you marry her, you know? <laughs> you, you hit on something real quick. You said uh, you're building uh, backyard gyms for, for kids and stuff. Do you guys still do that? Yeah, constantly. But the thing is, a lot of people don't realize how expensive that stuff is. Yeah. And yeah. so they see it and they and we come to them like, that's I hate money. Like, I just, I don't like talking to people about money. I don't like even expressing it. But when they come to us, they're like, oh, we want this. I'm like, you know, that's like five grand in materials yeah. in labor. And they're like, five grand? I thought it was like 500. Because if people don't come from a construction background, they don't get the gist. And yeah. so some people are don't care. And they're like, hey, I want to do it. We just built a huge course in a, in a, in a kid's backyard that's almost as big as our gym. Yeah. Damn. That's cool. It rivals that. our gym for sure. That's cool that <laughs> that's crazy. there's, uh, crazy. there's young kids that are loving to do that. Well, how could they not? It's like fucking the ultimate playground. Oh, shit. Yeah. And kids don't have garden. that anymore. No, they don't. We talk about that all the time where you never see kids. When we were kids, you, the second we got home, we were on our fucking bikes. We yep. were playing ditch and we were throwing <laughs> footballs, baseball. We'd have baseball teams based on who the block was. And you would go, I mean, it was, you're out until your fucking dad, my dad would go come out in the middle of the night or in, at nighttime and just whistle. And we could hear him from blocks yeah, away. Yeah. Yep, yep. Time to go home. Yep. And that's, that's how it was like every, every night. 
I watch my nephews. They have like they're watching one screen. And then they have another device, yes. and then they're fucking like, and then they have like my sister or my sister's phone. Dude, like, my what son, what are you? Which one are you doing? My son's been doing that lately. He's like playing Fortnite and streaming YouTube, and he's all, <laughs> "I'm gonna get out of here with that. Get out of here with that." It's, fucking, it's crazy shit. <laughs> oh man, it's fucking weird. It really is weird. And then like with the uh, homeschooling now too, like I just feel like there's kids are gonna grow up so fucking weird because when i when you guys were in like eighth grade or freshman year do you remember when like the new kid would come and you'd find out he was homeschooled like he was usually fucking weird as fuck he was he, weird. he was smart no, smart was weird because yeah, like, yeah. he had no social interactions yeah, with everybody you exactly. know so well that's gotta like, be the hard part about homeschooling it's gotta be the main thing right um is getting that social interaction because they don't get it right except for at your gym right exactly that's a great which has been point. nice because we've actually we've been trying to reach out to homeschool groups great so we can idea. kind of get them get together yeah, be active smart. hang out in a you know safe environment um, and hopefully that'll that'll kick in that's a great point. idea yeah well i had this great idea which i thought was a great idea it was, called, it was a really good idea it was a study study school where basically the parents that can't sit there and i have a daughter and she's eight and he has kids that are one year older one year younger yeah and so when the kids got out of school, the first time it was, okay, here's your Monday homework packet. Make sure this is all done on Monday. That's it. Now it's, you got to be logged into the computer at eight o'clock and you're going to go from eight Dude, to seven forty in the morning yeah, for 15 my 15 minute breaks. And then they got a different lunch and then they got to be back on the computer. So everything is by time. So before we knew about this, we're like, okay, so when you have to go to work, you drop your 10 kids off with us. We'll set up stations. We'll get them all on the laptops and we'll make sure they get their work done. And then the truth came out. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, oh, by the way, online school is now hell. Yeah. And yeah. we're like, there's Zoom no Zoom meetings way all day long. Yeah. We yeah. can track 10 different kids' schedules from 10 different school districts. And they were like, different nah. grades. So. It's ridiculous. It's a calamity. It's a complete calamity. I had a lot of moms that were like, oh, this is going to be great. And then three days in, they're like, can I dump my kids off? And I'm all, sure. Like, yeah, it's, at some it's point, out of control. Yeah, at it, some point, as a parent, there's got to be gotta a, release that energy. Yeah. No, no kid can sit in front of a computer yeah, like that no. unless they're playing games yeah. for six or seven hours. Like, yep. My dad was just telling me he did a Zoom class with my nephew, and it was just a complete shit show. None. Of the, yeah. the, he's like fucking six, and they can't. You know, none of the kids are sitting in front of the screen. They're picking their nose, yep. and then like the literally the last minute, the teacher's like, "Okay, that's it. Bye, bye, bye." Yeah. And my dad's like, "That's it." She's like, "Yep, that's it. Bye." She could not wait to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> <She's> like, <"This." laughs> I mean, you gotta this. you gotta give them a break and some credit too, because like they didn't sign up for this. No, yet. fuck no. They so, got, yeah, like, they got screwed. This yeah. is just it's. And then you have you have schools like my kids were in a Montessori school. That's all hands on. Yeah, that's all it is. You make your own schedule. Everything is hands on, and now they're going to try to do that online. Like, I just don't get it. it. You ever, um, there, there's a really good documentary I saw about um, the difference in how Germany raises their family and how their life is in Germany. And one of the things that I thought was really cool about what they do over there is um, you get a tax break if, if your wife, and it's really old fashioned, I get it, but you get a tax break. <laughs> if you get a tax break if your wife stays at home and doesn't work. And then and and then the parents, the wives are the school people and the kids, they don't do anything from like you know, up to age eight, but go play in the woods. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. and learn all their shit in the woods. All the all the classes is out in the woods. And that's fucking genius. Like camping and shit. Yeah, that, yeah, and, that's and, smart. And, as and fuck. they just learn to play with other kids, and you know they well, learn how to do shit. And... Let's be real. Besides learning your colors, how to read, and doing maybe some basic math, do you remember? I didn't learn anything. I didn't learn anything. In, you know what? Ten I years old. I learned how to cheat when I was in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned how to do drugs. <laughs> yeah, that's what I learned. Yep. <laughs> I learned more on spelling through text message yes. than I ever learned. Yeah. So in school, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or people hitting my ass up. That's the wrong there. That's the wrong your. I'm yeah. Like, Shit. I, yeah. Everyone still does that. <laughs> yeah. Grammar Nazis. <laughs> I still don't know. I still don't use the right there. I think that I think that our language is slowly changing to like emojis. <laughs> Close. I have a friend that only yeah. Rich. He only sends. I'll send him a question. It's only emojis. I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, yeah. It's like I will go Yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed uh, to decipher. I'm like, what are you saying? Yeah. But also, like, the word "you" is gonna be "you," just the letter "u" yeah. in the future. You know what I mean? And "r" is just gonna be "r." You know what I mean? Like, we're changing how 
based on our texting skills just gets lazier it gets yeah. it gets lazier and lazier yeah that's but exactly I, right. i'd be all for that if we could if we actually lived in a society where it was a one income household yes. but like that's impossible these days you're right you're 100 so. right it's it's really sad that i think that is where the change i think one of the biggest changes happened in the at least in american f- from f- us growing up to the now. family unit is that mothers started working yeah you know? And I'm, I'm, that's great for for women's rights and everything, but for the fami- f- the family unit, it really fucking fractured. It's, they shit. made it to where they the mother and father both have to work just to pay fucking rent. Now. Yeah, and yeah. somebody's raising their kids. A teacher is raising their kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sad. some somebody saw saw the green light. Like, hey, mom's gonna work. There's gonna be more money in the family. House yep. rights go up. Yep. yep, we'll take advantage of this. Yep, that's exactly it. Sad. Well, I, at, I, at the beginning of this COVID thing, I really was like really hopeful that maybe this would be something that caused us to like beat this thing together and we would all, you know, fucking do what we had to do. And that fucking changed really quick. <laughs> <laughs> that was not happening, man. I feel like it you started ran out of toilet to... paper, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it started to, and then it quickly became a shit show, a shit show. And then especially cause they're like, Again, my conspiracy there. People are bonding together. Mm-hmm. Let's throw in the race card yep. and fucking separate everybody. Can we take again. the last five minutes to just go deep on your conspiracy <laughs> theory? Like, oh, dude, you is it the lizard minutes. people? No, no, no. The lizard people? You no, know, <laughs> I don't know. But you know what? I I wouldn't pass. I don't know. I don't know what's out there. I think anything's possible. That's, That's how I am. That's yeah. where I'm at. Amen. Uh, we were just talking about fucking two weeks ago. The government just uh, announced that. They have vehicles that were created off-world. Parts like, of vehicles from parts of off-world vehicles. ships. So they were yeah. pretty much just emitted UFOs. And yeah, it's like, yeah. no one's talking about this? Like, Well, what as the soon fuck? as the like, Catholic Church acknowledged that there might be aliens, uh-huh. I went, okay, something's coming. That's what you said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're 100% right, man. <laughs> it's That's, coming in our yeah. lifetime, too. Yeah. It's already happened, man. It's already happened. Well, I mean, it like it coming oh, a big up, showing, like, up where the, to the... yeah. White House lawn type shit. There's a uh, there's a documentary called The Unacknowledged. Yeah. Have you seen that? I've heard of it. Okay. If you haven't watched it, you got to watch okay. it. But basically, the guy says that the government, the the military industrial complex uh-huh. is so far ahead uh-huh. that they have the capability to stage uh, an alien invasion if they wanted to. Yeah. To just flag fully event. take over everything. Yeah, that's, age? Uh, they did. They basically did that without aliens in Vietnam. Uh, the Gulf of Tonkin incident was a false flag. It yeah. didn't really happen. Yeah. And for years, that was in all our history books. Um, so, you're yeah, it's crazy. The military military industrial complex is fucking scary, and that's what these places that they have these parts in these pieces in is like these really deep state military places that nobody knows shit about. And that's where, you know, the black budget money and all that shit, man. Right. We're going to ask where $19 trillion went right before 9-11 hit. Yeah. And then nobody said another word about it. Yeah. I just can't believe people are that good at keeping secrets. Like, I would want to tell somebody if I knew something cool. But like you, I, I, you like, my <laughs> friend, are like me, and you're naturally confrontational and defiant. Whereas you have people who, I don't want to name names, but they listen to the government. They do what they're told. Mm-hmm. They won't ever break any rule and Puppets. those are the people that work for them that where they say if you tell anybody christian we'll kill your friends and family <laughs> <laughs> so. i feel like that's i feel like that is what the human has been raised to do for millennia now it's you know people like to be told what to do yeah it makes things easier which yeah. is they just film those experiments where like people like to be told what to do right but like i i just always ask i go how many times are you gonna let your girlfriend cheat on you before you stop fucking listening to them. Like yeah. Area 51 didn't exist until Google went up. Oh, there it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's the proof of, of our government giving blackmail syphilis because they were doing experiments and not fucking telling like yeah. they got caught smuggling cocaine, cocaine. into the United yeah. States. Like yeah. how many times are you going to do something before you go? These guys, yeah. they don't have my best interests no. in mind and they're not telling me the truth at all. I think yeah. people are finally waking up to that with COVID of how, you know, the government's been handling everything, but fucking, it feels like me and you and Brian have been, or everyone here has been open up to that way before. Like you can't trust the government to fucking handle your shit. No, or at it, any point. we've been, we're a corporation at this point. Yes. So that's a great, great fucking way to put it. We are a corporation. That's what the United States of America is. And for the longest time I yeah, said sure. that we would never have another hot war because 
we're such a, a world um, uh, economy that we all need each other. But with this COVID shit, that changes a lot. Right. That changes a lot. So it's, it's, we had a guest on uh, David Wimberly that said we live in crazy fucking times and it, he's a hundred percent right. Like this is fucking crazy. <laughs> this is nuts. When, like Keith said, when the fucking New York times and the government comes out and says, not only are UFOs real, but we have pieces from ships that were built <laughs> off world and nobody says shit about it. You know you're in fucking crazy times, man. Or when uh, what was it the 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 Navy put out that video? That's exactly what we're talking about the yeah. Tic Tac video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fucking they had a a, a, a Pentagon uh, A tip um, Advanced Aerial Threat Phenomenon Group or something like that that was getting billions of dollars in the budget to find and track these UFOs. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> That's so crazy. So I got a question for you. You said Christians are crazy. Uh huh. <laughs> I heard that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you want to get into out. this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's what I mean by that. I didn't. I didn't mean. I didn't mean they're crazy. But what I do mean is, 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 for the longest time. So Christ, one, one, if Christ was real, um, one of his major things that caused him to get angry about everything was that. Um, the, the people were following the Pharisees blindly. They were just anything the Pharisees would say they would do. And he, you know, got angry and fucking told them, no, you, you fucking have to question. You can no, not follow your faith blindly. Right. And the majority of people who are in the Christian denomination, like just go to church, listen, what their preacher says, they probably have never read the Bible themselves. Don't know the true history of the Bible as a book. Um, don't know the true history of the church um, and facts and stuff like that. And with that, take the dogma out of it. They just, it's, it's all blind faith. You know what I mean? And that's what I mean by that. A lot of people are, are following their faith blindly. And that's not just with Christian. I think that's with any re uh, Western religion. Yeah, no, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just, um, <laughs> something happened with us with Ninja Warrior lately. And there was a big, the top guy from the show got caught texting sexting a 14 year old illicit photos now he got wrapped up by the fbi just won the million bucks now he's in federal prison and there's these chat groups obviously ninjas with ninjas and there's people that are defending him right and then we're at me and rambo over here you want to defend him meet us at our gym we'll beat your ass like yeah, that yeah, shit is yeah. not right like yeah if you make an excuse for a 14 year old girl to be sending you nude not even nude i'm talking about straight up yeah just like, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. like and you still have it in your phone years later you're fucked up. I don't care what the situation uh -huh. is. Okay. But then there's people that are the Christians that are like, Oh, forgive the sinner. Don't, don't, don't love the, the sin, sin. Yeah, yeah. hate the sin, forgive the sinner. And I'm like, fuck you. The whole point. Now I'm looking at this going, now people are just saying that you should forgive sin so they could fucking sin themselves. And then yeah. be like, Oh, forgive me. No, no, no fuck, fuck your that. kids. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. No, no, that's wrong. So it is. You're hundred percent right. That is fucking gross. And, and some of these people that are defending him. I get it. Like it's their friend and they don't want to believe that he was capable of doing something like this. And, and then it came into the discussion. Well, what's really the difference between a 15 year old and an 18 year old and blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, hold up. 18 year olds are fucking idiots too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's just You're be real. Right. Okay. But this man was 26 when he started. He was in a position of power because he was famous. He took advantage of a 14 year old girl. And now they're saying, well, she knew what she was doing. No, no. It's not how that works. Not yeah. when you're 26 and she's 14. These are calculated decisions. You knew what you were doing was wrong because you were hiding it. Not only because you were, had a girlfriend at the time. You know what I mean? Like, but it's fucking wrong. And they're like, oh, well, he shouldn't be getting 15 years. Yes, he should. Yes, he should. Because he works with kids. That's his job. He should get and a longer advantage. sentence. Yeah, he took advantage okay? of it. Okay, and he totally abused his power. And that's where it's, for me, it's it's Listen, absolutely zero tolerance. Yeah. Like, I get, when I was 19, or not 19, when I was 18 in high school, my girlfriend was a freshman. Like, there was a big age difference there. You know what I mean? And like, And we grew up together. So at some point, she was underage. I wasn't underage. So like that could have been something bad, but yeah. I, you know what I mean? That's to me, that's something totally different than I agree. What was going on? Yeah. You know when I mean? you're in, when you're at 26. When you're yes. Right. So yeah, you're taking advantage, but there's a code. There's always been a code. Um, well, not always, but there's a code within our society, even to the most hardened of hardened criminals that 
you fuck with kids. And yeah. That's it. It's there, over. There's there there's nothing in this world is black and white except that. Right. You don't fuck with kids because they can't fight back. You know, yep. I mean? like for me, there's two things. You don't fuck with kids and you don't fucking hurt animals because those two things can't you can't fight back. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what I mean? That's that's another message I want to add. Yeah. Don't fuck with animals. Yeah. Don't man. fucking if you kick if you kick a dog in front of me, I know a fucking that's it. You know what I mean? Like, come on. And and if there's something that can't um, fight back or defend itself, this guy's um doing time though. Yeah, he just got picked yeah, up. Yeah, so. he got picked up by the feds, man. Good. They came to his house and everything. You said and they're 15 like, oh, years? What's that? You said 15 years? Well, they're, they're saying that That's, he's getting minimum of 15. Yeah, because cool. he was Sick. he's being charged for like the child porn because yeah. of the she's underage. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 sending a minor across lines for uh, state lines uh -huh. for illicit whatever. You know what I mean? Like there's a... Because he flew her out to his gym list of charges for yeah. her 15th birthday. What are the parents? <laughs> well, that's what the thing is. <laughs> She told the parents after it, no, and he said, "I didn't realize that she was only 15." But he had flown her out on her fifth for her 15th birthday yeah. to celebrate at his gym. So then it came down to the mom and daughter said she's going to kill herself, so the mom never reported oh. it. Yada yada. I mean, there's always more and more, but again, it's just one of those situations. Feel bad I, for the daughter right now, man. That yeah, and, and I don't want to sound rude or heartless too but like sh for her to wait till he won the million and then come out and do this is fucking pretty shitty but he should have known he knew what he was doing he should have known better not to do stuff like that you know what i mean like of course this is america he won a million bucks we're capitalizing yeah, on it now you know what i mean but yeah i don't know yeah he's in he's in jail right now and and everyone's like well wait till the case happens and this and that and there's Someone had said, well, there's two sides to every story. And I'm like, there's not two sides to this. Not and if you want to debate this, you come down to the gym and we'll talk. Yeah. Is this in Arizona? No. He, the the dude lives in Florida. Florida. Uh, and the girl in question, I think, when it was going on, was, was in New Jersey or something, right? Yeah. But he's like the face of the show. So like yeah. Ninja Warrior has been all over the news the last couple of years. Yeah. Weeks. NBC like, dropped him. Everything he's associated with dropped him. Like, you know, this is... And now this people are trying to capitalize on it by saying now every competition you need to go get background checked. You got to go, and they're making up these new programs, yeah. and then they're going to charge you for them, and they, you have to watch these videos. And I'm like, just you can't use, stop that. You like, got to use common sense. Well, it was like it felt like Ninja Warrior was something that wasn't tainted with that kind of stuff because I mean it happens in gymnastics, it happens in you know the Boy Scouts, it happens in all these other things, and it was where? like Ninja Warrior was so clean. It's been 12 years, yeah, since this has been around, and then now this hit, and it's like. Like he said, everyone and their mother's trying to come up with some sort of cert. This, that, I, here's my cert. I, I'm i class three weapons holder. The FBI knows everything about me. Yep. I'm a concealed weapons carrier. There's my cert. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, totally. So. Well, the show does do a huge background check on us. Like, yeah. We were, first thing you do when you get on the show is you delete all your old Facebook calls. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh shit, I was, I look like I wet my pants at a party because yeah. I'm just drinking so much. Like, you go through, and I didn't have Twitter back in the day, but I probably would have started deleting some old Twitter remarks. But you go back and you pretty much, because at that point, little kids, if they want to find some dirt on you, they will find some dirt on oh, you. Oh, for sure. So you have to clean it up. This is a family show. So I, granted, I, I'm not a judgmental person. I had the greatest times in college. Do I regret some things I did? Yeah. Do I need to keep those relics? No. So when I deleted like all my party photos and my drinking and all that, a little bit of me was like, oh, I'm going to regret that down the road. And then the other part was like, I don't really need that. Like, I don't, I don't need to go back and, and reminisce. Exactly. Yeah. So that's a whole lifetime ago. Yes. Yep. So they do that and then they go through and they vet you for like, takes up to two months and they'll do, they'll dig deep anything that they can find in you. Cause the last thing they want to do is put someone on TV with their name and their logo on oh, it for sure. yeah. and then do it. That's so their product. Yeah. But again, this brand. kid and they want you to our brand. They want you to represent too, yeah. you know, yeah. NBC and, but that's the thing is this is the guy, he was the brand and he had no, no background. Like this is a one-time thing. There's nothing you could have done to prevent this except for just being a parent, but nobody holds parents responsible for shit these days. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing. You're hundred percent right on that. The, the parents get away with a lot. Uh, of, of yeah, if, I mean, if that was my like daughter that. and I'm gonna commit suicide, oh, we'll see about that. You're getting your ass whipped. This motherfucker's getting beat up. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, those parents should have done something immediately because it went on for two, three years till she was 17. Yeah, three years. Ooh. Yeah. Oh man, that's so. Like it, like I said, it wasn't like this one-off thing. This was like calculated decision making. 
plans. I don't know how anyone thinks they could get away with that. It always comes back to haunt. You know what right? I'm saying? Like, I don't know how you just have to. I think they're just sick. You know, they're sick motherfuckers. I'm just, I'm just curious because like usually when something like this happens, it's not just one girl. True that. Yeah. So Well, it also, like you guys were talking about earlier on and for another reason where you guys are saying you're really selective on who you let in your gym. Now you got to be this is comes into mind now i mean that's you and you thought you didn't have to deal with this and right. now here it is we and do background we, checks on guests too so <laughs> I'm, like i said i'm, I'm, just, I'm squeaky honest, clean yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why they didn't want to actually, call us yeah. we were too clean actually uh, this is the part where i found some shit um, <laughs> but no we've we've always you know we've thought about that kind of stuff just because it's a very handsy like yeah so it's when you're spotting kids doing stuff like yeah you, you got to be careful about the man we're getting really dark here so i don't know if i want to get in this but you know the people that are that come work at your gym you're yeah. like f like that's the kind of the people where you got to be careful about because yep. those those fucking sick fucks they find ways to make that a part of their life no yep. fucking terrible yeah well, but that's a good thing about us so we're not just owners we're owner operators so we're we're there every day no with the kids a. watching you know and again we don't really have a lot of staff. We have some volunteers that work with us, but they've been with us for almost two years and they all have, like I said, you never know these days, but for, for the most part, um, most of the people are families, family people. Yeah. 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 That's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. That's a bummer, but I felt, uh, I, I do some acting jobs on the side a couple and I actually filled a background check for a um, Scientology commercial. <laughs> Cause it was, it was like about this Scientology commercial was going to pay my bills for a year. And they're like, we picked you, blah, blah, blah. We're going to do the background check. I know they went on my Instagram, just saw like mushrooms and weed and all that. <laughs> and they're like, fuck this guy. We don't want him on our commercial. Yeah. Shit, so. <laughs> Those background checks are brutal though. <laughs> Where can they find your guys' stuff on social media and stuff like that? So just in, hit squad ninjas is our Instagram. Ninja Gym. Hit, uh, I think I took the gym word off. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah because of covid yeah yeah smart <laughs> it's like oh. it's like hit squad ninja clothing and apparel now yeah <laughs> we are officially a day here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should put that in there now yeah. uh, stay open whatever you got to do man whatever you got to do you guys are having fun and it sounds like you guys figured out a way to maybe get a, get away from that hamster wheel of corporate america bullshit and enjoy what you do and we're always fucking all about that. So maybe we want to do a shout out. Yeah, let's, uh, before we go, shout out to uh, mellowbydesign.com. Make sure you guys go check out mellowbydesign.com for all your natural uh, CBD uh, needs uh, for like uh, um, salves and tinctures and all that good stuff. They have uh, really good stuff for um, to help you sleep. Uh, they have stuff for pain. Um, their rubs and salves are amazing. My brother's using the shit out of it. Um, I actually need to get some more for him. He's running low, but he swears by the stuff. So CBD for pain, sleep, all that good stuff. Make sure you guys go check out mellowbydesign.com. They're going to have a, a website starting shortly. It's going to be bogcastcbd.com to where you guys can go uh, get a really, really good discount on all that stuff. Um, we'll let you know when it's up. Also, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash the bogcast. Um, go check out the Timmy D. Uh, this is a way for you guys to support us. If you love the show and you want to help out, um, this is a, a really easy way and a lot of goody, goodies in there. We'll get you guys um, your own uh, Ladmo bags. Uh, so uh, have fun with that. Anything else, brother? No, we really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to come on and talk about your experiences and your gym. And you guys are, well, your daycare. You yeah. guys are uh, <laughs> seriously welcome back whenever Day you camps. want. If you guys yeah. ever have a Sunday, you just want to fuck around and bullshit. If you're bored or if you have something you want to promote or like a show or whatever, um, just, you know, cool, I man. really had fun talking to you guys and it'd be uh, cool to have you guys Yeah, back. I had a blast. So, hey, it goes both ways. So if there's anything we can do to support you guys, let us know. Oh yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're yeah. glad to have you on, and that's that's uh, that's sweet. That's what we want to create is that community. So, yeah. and that is a wrap on episode ninety five of the Ballcast. Dope.